Many of you know I live at Bellarmine, I work at Bellarmine. And on a beautiful sunny day like today, there's an interesting thing that happens. It's all about perspective. Because we have this great view, this stunning view of Mount Rainier from the campus, as many of you know, from our Jesuit community up on the second floor of Orton Hall, this commanding view of the mountain when it's out. But there's a really strange thing that happens. The mountain looks one way, it looks one size from various spots on the campus and from, from our community living room. And then if I get in a car and drive down to 23rd and Union and catch a glimpse of the mountain, it looks about five times bigger. Not an uncommon occurrence here in Tacoma, right? It's not limited to that part of Tacoma, but how is it that this mountain grows so much? Why does it change? Obviously, the mountain isn't changing. But we are, and our perspective does. And so, too, I think when we look at the resurrection and look at what this story is about, in the exchange between Martha and Jesus, in this raising of Lazarus and those that witness it, in its perspective. It's a story of perspective. It's also a very human story. What we start to see at this point in John's Gospel very clearly is the humanity of Jesus. We get this description that, you know, Jesus was good friends with Martha and with Mary and with Lazarus, that he loved them, that he's perturbed a couple of times, he weeps, he's sad. So it's this picture of Jesus as fully human. You know, it's hard for us to hold together this idea that Jesus is fully divine and fully human. And the gospel writers have different takes on how to approach that. And what we see in this passage is an example from John's gospel emphasizing that humanity of Jesus. That Jesus loves and has friends. Yes, of course, Jesus is God and God loves us all, and, but that can be a little distant sometimes. And what John's showing here is a different picture. And that, that kind of love, no, well, it's for us all. And inasmuch as we have that love for one another, Jesus understands it. So it's a very human story. They're weeping, they're sad. The others who have come from Jerusalem, the Jews, John uses this a lot in his gospel to refer to the religious establishment around the temple. Kind of uses it mockingly a little bit. They think they are the true Jews and everybody else is quasi. That's a whole other homily and a whole other story, though. But, so, you know, these people that aren't sure, that have authority around the temple, and they come and they watch Jesus, and they ask questions. Certainly he healed the blind man. Couldn't he have done this? It's a human story. And Martha comes out, and she has this exchange with Jesus. Lord, I know if you would have been here, this wouldn't have happened. And I also know that whatever you ask of the Father will happen. So she's showing great faith. And, she, and when Jesus tells her, Martha, Lazarus will rise. She's kind of like trying to show Jesus, yes, I understand, I know. He will rise on the last day. I know that you are the Messiah. And in the midst of it, Jesus says to her, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. That what he's saying to Martha, he's saying to us that the resurrection isn't just something distant. It's not out in the future. It's not up in heaven. It's here and now. It transcends time and space, that that resurrection that's promised to Lazarus, that Martha understands, Jesus says, no, it's here and now. Says it to Martha and says it to us as followers. 
And I think we know the reality of that if we think about it. The resurrection that occurs in our own experiences of healing and relationships, the other little resurrections in our life, so that we participate in the resurrection here and now. You know, sometimes we think of heaven as something so other than this. But we know, we hear, that the love that we have participates in the love of God. Therefore, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we participate in it now. The scripture says it all the time. I was having a, a conversation earlier, a few months ago, with my oldest sister. Now, she would hate that I'm telling this story and identifying her, but since she doesn't live in Tacoma, and there's no, there's, there's little, little chance that you'll ever meet her. She, she won't be too embarrassed. Um, she's the oldest. There's an 18-year difference between us. She was the oldest in the family. Um, and she, we were talking about the family, and she said, you know, Sometimes I feel like I'm not sure where I belong. She said, I think so much about, you know, our grandmother that, you know, was the grandmother that we knew, and our aunts and uncles, um, our parents who have all passed away. You know, this childhood filled with cousins and family, extended family, and even some of those cousins have started to die now, too. And, she says, I, I think of them a lot, and, and I pray, and I feel their presence, and yet, as a mother and as a grandmother, she loves her family greatly and doesn't want to be, you know, removed from them at all. And so that's where she was saying, I feel like I, I live in two worlds sometimes. My heart is with them, but certainly with our family as it is now, you know, her own children and grandchildren but even the nieces and nephews and their children. I think that's what this gospel is talking about, this sense of the resurrection here and now. Because we, we believe it and we say it and we know it that it's the love that remains. That what this gospel message is about always is love. And that the permanency in our lives, the immortality, is especially characterized by the love. And so when Martha is quick to try to explain to Jesus that she really does have faith, still she has a little something to learn. Jesus saying, yes, Martha, you're right, but that's not completely yet. It's here and it's now. And so as we continue this Lenten journey and we move on our way, to the Easter celebration. The resurrection isn't just April 16th. We don't just celebrate it then. It's all out of time, even though we are in time. We are here and now in Tacoma in 2017. Jesus and Martha and Mary and Lazarus, and we're in Palestine in the first century after the birth of Christ in those early years. But that resurrection transcends all of that. And so, yeah, sometimes we are kind of in between two worlds. Or we're, we have our foot in two worlds. Maybe it's not that we're in between, but we're in both places. This is our good news. That inasmuch as we sometimes experience suffering and challenge and difficulty, so too on the back of that is resurrection and joy and life.